Well, praise the Lord, everyone. Padre Cristo, hermanos. Bienvenidos a nuestro uh, uh, estudio. Otra vez aquí en estos miércoles. Gracias a Dios. Um, estamos aquí listos para escuchar la, la palabra de Dios. Um, we're just really grateful that we could be here to hear the word of God. And, and um, of course, um, you know, hear the perspectives, different perspectives, um, también para escuchar los diferentes opi no, opiniones, pero, you know, lados de, de, de los uh, hermanos que están aquí, nuestros maestros. Um, so we're grateful for that. Just just very quickly in the way of uh, announcements, of course, this Sunday, um, uh, we'll have our, our Sunday service once again at, at 10 a.m. right in front of the church. Uh, this Sunday, we're going to be having a missionary service, um, um, just uh, honoring missions, of course, collecting the mission offering, but more so just honoring the missionaries. And it's just, we have a special um, service planned. So that, that's always fun. En este domingo, tenemos nuestro culto misionario. Como siempre, nuestro culto comienza a las 10, ahí al frente de la iglesia y también en Facebook. Um, also, of course, we'll be live on, on Facebook, so we'd love to have you be with us um, either way. So uh, God is, um, is, is moving. Um, he, he really is. We had a, a great time this Sunday that has passed uh, in, in our service. Uh, gracias a Dios, tenemos un gran tiempo en nuestros cultos el domingo que pasado. Para mí era increíble uh, porque hay los gente que está caminando allí, um, era un, pa, um, un pareja, a, a couple, pareja, un pareja que entró y, híjole, Dios tocó a esta pareja, a este hombre, a esta um, um, dama, estaba llorando como niños, um, it was just a tremendous time, um, we just had uh, of course, we have people walking by, but we had this couple that, you know, entered in and man, it was just a beautiful thing. You know, the, uh, the man was just uh, just weeping and, and the lady and it just God really moved um, in the service. So we're, we're, we're excited uh, about that. Um, pero en este momento, los hermanos están aquí. Uh, and pues dan un gran saludo. I'm going to invite the brothers to, to give a, 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 a big uh um, salutation uh, to to the uh, to all of you, brothers. Hermanos, paz de Cristo. Su hermano Gustavo Vargas aquí saludándole. Primeramente decirles que estoy contento, estoy agradecido una vez más por esta oportunidad, por esta plataforma que Dios nos concede de compartir palabra de Dios y como dijo nuestro pastor, las opiniones con todos ustedes. Este tiempo es para ustedes. Es un tiempo en el que podemos regocijarnos con la palabra de Dios. Así es que, por favor, no nos deje solos. Una hacia nosotros. Comparta a todos nuestros hermanos que nos miran desde México y de otros países, de otras partes de los Estados Unidos. Dios les bendiga y les llene su corazón. Estos temas que escogió nuestro pastor son los temas muy sabrosos. Tienen mucha carne, como dice el pastor, yeah. ¿verdad? They have a lot of meat. I'm grateful for this, this platform, for this time that we are given to, to just share the word of God. Uh, I'm going to ask you to continue to join us. Please join us. Share your heart with us. If you have any questions, please ask. I'm so happy to know that you're here and to see you. Uh, rejoice with us. Dios les bendiga. Cuídense mucho. Les amo. Les aprecio. Por favor, comparta su corazón con nosotros en los comentarios. Dios les bendiga. Praise the Lord, Paz de Cristo, todos. Um, man, that was a really tough thing to follow up. <laughs> uh, what's up, guys? Uh, praise the Lord, Daniel, as you all know, as it says right down there by my name or by my picture. Uh, I'm just really excited to be here again. I mean, Pastor has given us a very, very, very thought-provoking and intriguing topic for this month. So I look forward to all the lessons that we're going to be given, that God is going to put upon us, all the wisdom and knowledge he's going to pour out into us and through us to everybody else. But also I'm looking forward to your guys' interactions with us, the comments, the questions that will arise from this, all of that good stuff. And like Gustavo said, again, these Bible studies are for you all. They are for all of us to grow together, to sharpen each other up, to just 
get deeper in the word of God and our relationships with God. So again, greetings to all those that are from the church that are visiting on this and that are out of state and out of country maybe. And let's all just fellowship together and learn about God together. Amen. Praise the Lord. Pase Cristo, hermanos. Amen. Good to be here. Uh, me da gusto estar con ustedes otra vez. Uh, no es una pérdida de tiempo cuando se trata de oír la palabra de Dios. It's not a waste of time when it's about uh, um, learning and hearing about the word of God. Um, espero que todos estén bien. Uh, Dios es grande y poderoso. I, I, I know that you're all okay. Um, and if there's something you're going through, God is good. God is great. And uh, mm. he is all powerful. Dios los bendiga. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Um, I, I think before before we open, uh, uh, I'd like to just uh, start with a, a word of prayer. We want to pray for Sister Anita's cousin, who is is sick. Um, I believe her name is Michelle. If I misunderstood, uh, don't remember. Just remind me, Anita. I saw her online. Um, Michelle um, uh, also. Uh, there was someone else, and it'll probably come back to me during the time I'm talking. My um, friend, Macias, Pastor, please. Uh, say again? Antonio Macias. Oh, Antonio. Antonio and um, Michelle. And um, also there's, uh, again, just that same pastor that's there in the hospital. I'd like to pray for him and his family um, to just uh, continue to be with them. Also... For um, Alberto, Alberto and Miriam's um, twins, um, for the most part, they're doing good. Uh, I, I think it's okay. This is common knowledge that um, they did bring um, one of the babies home. The other's still in the hospital. But um, And so uh, just let's continue to pray for um, little Faith and little Abigail and, of course, the, the, new, the new parents. And uh, that um, God just continues to, 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 to bless them. So um, why don't we go ahead and, and just open up with a, a, a word of um, prayer. Oh, Anita's saying it's Blanca. Okay, so we'll pray for Blanca. And uh, that God just brings the healing. So Daniel, why don't you lead us in prayer, brother? If you can't remember everyone's name, you could just say everyone mentioned. <laughs> Amen. Well... Heavenly Father, Lord, we just come before you first and foremost, ever grateful and thankful for who you are and the roles that you fulfill in our lives, regardless of what we ask of you, what we need of you, you are there, you are present, you are working in all of it, in the tough and in the good, Lord God, so we thank you for that, we thank you for that history of you doing that, God, because as we come before you, firstly, again, just grateful for who you are, we also can come before you with our needs, knowing that they will be met, so Lord, for Anita's need, for Brother Gustavo's presented friends in need, and for the pastor that Pastor Bruno is referencing, for the daughters of Alberto and Miriam, we know that they've all been through a lot, not just the kids, not just the pastor, but all the needs, Lord God, that are being presented and those that are not being presented as well, Lord God. But again, we're grateful to have the confidence and belief and true knowledge that you are God and you can bring miracles and you can do things that leave everyone baffled and truly left only to say it's because of God. So we thank you for those healings in advance, for the blessings, for the breakthrough that you're going to bring, for just the testimony that gets birthed through all this trial god again keep us confident keep us rooted in you and knowing that just as your word says you have plans to prosper us god so allow us to just wait and just be patient in the time before the prosperity comes god we thank you and praise you and in jesus name amen 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 great that's that's wonderful um this we're we're already in a new month month this is un nuevo mes uh por otro tema um, en este mes uh, estamos enfocado um, en el libro de, uh, de Santiago, uh, capítulo 1. I mean, el like capítulo 1, pero um, versículos um, uh, 13 a 27. Y si puedes mirar muchas cosas que está uh, uh, ahí para, para leer y, y estudiar y, y, y hablar. Um, el libro está muy rico. De, de cosas para nosotros para crecer en la palabra de Dios y también en, en Dios, uh, crecer en, en, en Dios. 
you know, the book of James, our, our new theme that we're, we're, we'll be focusing on uh, this month is James chapter one, verses um, 13 through 27, even though the whole book, the whole chapter is just really rich with uh, so much uh, that we could um, grow from, you know, um, really that's, that's the, um, the, the idea of the book of James, the, the los idea de la, la, the libro de uh, Santiago es por el cristiano para crecer. No es, no es, no era escrito por uh, ellos nuevositos, es nue ellos nuevo en la camino de Dios. Esto es um, escrito por ellos que está caminando y no se está faltando o es en el otro, uh, um, you know, uh, otro camino. Uh, entonces, este uh, libro es para ellos, pues, es re, re, um, remember, uh, uh, ¿cómo? Recordar. Recordar su primin, pre, primer, primero uh, camino. So, the book of James really is geared for, not necessarily the new, um, the new convert. Um, it, it really is uh, for the, the believer that's already been walking you know, on the road and maybe uh, of, of Christ and maybe has been um, distracted or in, in caught up in, into other things. And so really, really the, the book of James is not necessarily a letter, even though it's um, structured as a letter, it really is a collection of proverbial sermons. Um, back in the day when I used to teach this at Bible college, I would say, hey, young preacher if you're ever called on the spot flip open you know james because there's ready-made sermons right there for you to just just go for it um you know la la, la libro de, de santiago no es un carta como los cartas de pablo es es un colección de, de sermones uh como la libro de proverbios por proverbio pro, Proverbios. Proverbios. Um, y cuando yo, yo estaba enseñando este libro en la escuela, en la uh, colegio bíblico, yo siempre dice, todos los uh, predicadores, preachers has always been a challenge for me to say. Predica, uh, predicadores. 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 Predicadores jóvenes o nuevecitos. Y eso necesito un sermón así. Abre el libro de, de, de Santiago. Ahí está los sermones uh, listos para predicar. So it, it, it really is um, geared for this thrust for Christian growth. So, so James is presenting the things that he presents. He talks a lot about temptation and, and uh, mindsets and uh, uh, focuses and, and uh, responsibilities, all of these things geared for the Christian that already has this relationship with God. And the thrust is, is to grow, you know, and, 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 you know, he really does focus uh, a good por portion of it is this reminder of, of the greatest law. So, so, so la, la foque de, de Santiago is para crecer. El cristiano que está caminando para crecer más en, en, en este camino. En él habla de las cosas de los, los luchas y los, los um, nuestro mente. Uh, en hay muchas otras cosas que en este mes, if Dios quiere, si puedes, puedes uh, uh, hablar. Y también uno de los foques de él es los, uh, la ley más, uh, más grande, no más grande, greatest. How would you say greatest? El, lo más grande, lo más grande, el más grande. Yeah, the most, the, the greatest, the greatest commandment, which is, you know, we talked about, you know, you know, several months ago, which is, um, you know, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. And, and, and James really reiterates this in, in, you know, in this, uh, um, in his, in his book. So esto, la most grande ley es para am amar 
Dios con todo su corazón, con toda su mente, con, con todo su alma y también este amor por su vecino. Um, and he just, he, he really, he really reiterates that. Um, and, and he, 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 he's referring not, when he's saying, um, you know, this greatest commandment and living this, this life, it, he really is going to make a point and we're going to see that it, it's not necessarily on regulations or dietary regulations or rituals um, like the Jewish rituals, like circumcision, but really this, this, um, this life of believing God. Um, really, the, the theme for the month is true religion. And that's, what, that's really the focus we're going to talk about. And James mentions what is true religion, because it's so easy to be caught up in a lot of things like rituals and things like that, which we have seen in the studies that we've had all these months, that all the letters, even that Paul writes, is always this struggle with false teaching, going back to ritual, Jewish rituals, and so on and so forth. Nothing new in the book of James. So lo cosas que es, uh, los enseñanzas de, de, de Santiago es, es como los otros cartas de Pablo que es, es su batalla que los cristianos tienen para, para servir Dios como los judeos con todos estos reglas y, 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 y eso. Y, y, uh, pero también aquí en Santiago dicen esas cosas no, no son necesarias. No son necesarios, pero hay esta manera si puedes vivir para creer en Cristo en su poder. Eh, uh, Pablo dice, no Pablo, uh, Santiago dice, how would you say true religion? I think the Bible uh, literally says pure religion, but. Religión verdadera. The, yeah. Religión verdadera. Religión verdadera. Um, In, in James chapter 2 and in, in verse 21, you, you, man, you just jump in anytime. I, you know I'm setting the ground right now. James, 20, uh, James chapter 2 and verse 22 and 23, uh, it, it says this. If someone could put it up in Spanish, that'd be great. It says, it says, do you see that faith was working together with his work? And by the works of faith was made perfect. And the scripture was fulfilled which says Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness and he was called the, the friend of, of God. So en, esto, en esta escritura aquí en Santiago 2, aquí él está escribiendo que esto, esto fe es, es uh, uh, si, si puedes tener fe, ¿verdad? Yo puedo decir, sí, yo tengo fe en, en Cristo, pero si necesita mirar esto, esto, Fe funcionando en nuestra vida. Sí, so yo puedo decir, sí, tengo fe, tengo fe, tengo fe, pero estas cosas son adentro en nuestros corazones, pero necesita mirarlos en, en cómo se vive nuestra vida. So here, here, you know, James is saying in, in chapter two, where he's talking about Abraham and he believed God and he was counted for, for righteousness and You know, he, you know, working together with his works, meaning his faith had action because we could easily say, hey, I have faith. But if we don't see the faith manifested in our life, then one can question that. And we'll, we're going to we're going to really talk about that because it's going to circle back or, or it's going to come to what what. James calls true religion, and it will continually circle back to what this true religion is, which is action, which is service. Not necessarily, you know, we follow these Jewish regulations to prove that we're faithful. And that's, that's what James is trying to say is not what it is. It's more of this action that, that we're, we, we, we express. So, so it's an action. Cuando nosotros creen en Dios, cuando nosotros tenemos fe en Dios, nuestra vida necesita tener un acción para vivir. Uh, si puedes mirar. So 
cuando nosotros estamos con nuestros compañeros de trabajo, nuestros amigos, nuestra familia, en, nosotros tenemos fe. El, ellos pueden mirar, mira esto, persona tiene fe, porque él cree en Dios. Él, es, ¿Por qué? Porque, ¿qué? porque nosotros tenemos esa acción. Y we, we have this, this action that, that shows that, that we have faith. And this contrasts the behavior of the double-minded doubter, right? If, if you know James, you know he talks about the double, the double-minded person, where someone that has this double-mindedness has faith, but then that faith is compromised by the desire to serve self or the desire to serve the world or desire to to have a, a certain, you know, follow certain regulations like the Jews, which these things are always based on the Jewish regulations of eating and foot clothes and this, that, that, and, and the other. So here James is known for talking about a double-minded person is unstable in all of their ways. Why? Because we know people who say, oh, I believe in God, or I trust God, or this, that, and the other, and then they're medicating themselves with liquor or sleeping around or something like that. And that's the double-minded person. What is it? Are you trusting God or are you not? And this is what this is what James is talking about. Santiago está hablando que una persona que tiene su mente doblado, no. De, doblado. Tiene doble mentalidad. ¿Cómo? Doble mentalidad. Doble, doble mentalidad. Eso doble mentalidad. Sí, yo creo en Dios, pero mis acciones en mi vida no no es un, un un, un cosa si puedes mirar, porque yo dice, sí, yo tengo fe, pero ¿por qué yo tengo esta mentalidad, uh, doble mentalidad? Yo estoy viviendo en otra manera, estoy tomando, estoy fumando, no sé, está allí eh, en el mundo, o yo necesito para trabajar, Dios puede tener a, amor por mí. And this is, that's the challenge. That's the double-minded challenge. That's the challenge of the true, you know, true religion. Because if we go out on the street and say, hey, and ask a hundred people, what is true religion? We're gonna get a hundred different things of what true religion is. And what I'm building up is, and what um, 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 James is, is building up in, is saying, listen, James writes these things because uh, the people at that time have be started becoming indecisive of what was God, what was true religion, what was serving Christ, what was all, and they began to really, really what began to seep in the church was other things, other things that was taking them away from this life of service, this life of true religion. So Santiago está escribiendo eso porque en este tiempo, porque está escribiendo todo, por todos los hermanos en todas las partes del mundo en este punto que cosa estaba entrando la iglesia que que la gente los hermanos no, estuvo pensando uh, you know es eso bastante es Cristo los cruzos esas cosas son bastante o sí o no en el mundo estaba entrando la iglesia y en eso era un problema porque cuando nuestros mentes son está double minded we'll say that again doble, tiene doble mentalidad doble mentalidad no se puede sentir el poder de Dios because if we are double minded then we will not be faithful we will not believe and then we will we will we won't in our actions of faith and believing are are marred or scarred or broken however to say it then we won't be able to experience God like we should so la experiencia si no puedes tener la la, la experiencia del poder de Dios cuando nuestra mentalidad es así, para allá, para acá, si yo creo, no, yo no, no tengo fe, si yo tengo fe, y en, en, en es, un, es, un, es, un, es un problema, no solo en este tiempo cuando Santiago está escribiendo, pero también en este día. It's, it's, a real, it's a real world problem. Someone comment. Um, Pastor, uh, I, I, I think that it's very important to realize uh, two very important things. Number one is a faith should be the cause 
and our actions should be the effect. In other words, faith should be what triggers the way the the way we behave, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and not the other way around. Uh, yeah. Right, porque lo, lo podemos tener, uh, lo podemos a, a confundir, pastor, en, en este caso de fe, de acciones, de creer o no creer, uh, es como el juego de causa y efecto, ¿verdad? La fe debe mm-hmm. de ser siempre la causa y nuestras acciones debe de ser el efecto. Nosotros por fe, por, por causa de la fe, es que vamos a hacer, a creer, a seguir haciendo, en seguir trabajando ciertas cosas, ¿verdad? Y este... Es, 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 algo que, es algo que uno tiene que tener cuidado. Y uno es, es muy duro, pastor, y corrígeme si me equivoco. Uh, a veces es muy duro tener fe por sí mismo. It's very difficult to have faith for yourself, especially when you're going through it. Especially when somebody, we pray for the sick all the time. And it's very easy to have faith for other people. But when it comes to us, sometimes we put our head down and... and let your will be done, Lord. Or, or you know, like we diagnose ourselves or, or we, you know, we terminate ourselves, right? We, we can't do that. We can't yeah. do that. We're, we're, we're children of God. Somos hijos de Dios, de un Dios grande, de un Dios fuerte, de un Dios poderoso que creó el cielo, la tierra, el, el, el sol, las estrellas, la luna, todo. Y si Dios pudo todo hacer eso, y tú eres su hijo, and you're his child, and you're the apple of his eye, then God can and God will. If he wills, God, there is nothing that can hold him back. When God has a plan, there's nothing that can hold him back. Right. Y nosotros tenemos que poder creer en eso y aceptarlo. Yeah, yeah, it's true. It's, it's true. Yeah, someone else? I was going to say, I kind of really enjoyed how um, Gustavo's point also ties in with the scripture that you read from James 2, where it's faith, as it even shows up in the scripture, it's faith before the works, even though they're intertwined, you know, because again, we have to have like that foundation of faith. But just the beauty of just the way God works is that, um, I'm starting to lose my train of thought, but it's very similar to that point where your faith, um, because I have, the example I was going to share is I have a friend who I was talking to and I haven't talked to them in a minute. And the first thing they said to me was something very controversial, which I won't say because it paints them in a bad light. But it was a thing where the conversation led to them expressing a lot of concern and worry over everything going on in the world right now. And just like telling me, hey, be careful. But the way they're saying it is in a very fearful sense. And this person is you know a woman of God and they're an older person too so they're more of my senior so I'm like it's weird that like you having lived so much in God that your faith is so shaken by everything going on whereas the difference in me compared to just like no I'm like I'm fine God's going to take care of me one way or the other if he sees fit that whatever's going on in the world is the reason I exit this world then cool so be it. it's his choice but I'm confident that God is going to take care of me and all that and it kind of just falls under the same cycle that we've been sharing at times of there's a lot of things that are going to come our way. A lot of things are going to try to break us and hurt us, but God is going to overcome it and our faith will prevail. Our faith should lead us through it. So that way we don't have to be focused on things because the part that stuck out to me in our conversation was she said, I'm just focusing on myself. I'm praying and reading my word and staying to myself. But I'm like, but then where does God get, no disrespect, but where does God, you know, word get expanded? Where does like that great commission come? Where does the testimony get shown if we just isolate ourselves and be like, you know what? The world's going to hell. I'm just going to, you know, just <laughs> lock myself away and let the salvation just come for me. And then you know, everyone else figure their thing out. Yes, the word says each man work out his own salvation, but we know there's people that need to not only hear the word of God, but witness the word of God, you know, be the living testimonies that we're meant to be. So we can't let the things dictate, like Gustavo said, we can't let our works be dictating our faith's progression. It has to be our faith in God has to allow his work to be progressed because what progression will there be if our faith is minimal, if our faith is led by other things? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pastor, it's true. Before I, I I lose this thought, I I remember some time ago talking to a, an evangelist friend of mine, and she was saying that there was this person. She was giving a testimony. This person that was calling, right? 
And uh, she was crying and calling several people, trying to tell them the same thing. You know, this is just recent too. Uh, talking to them about COVID and everything. She, this person was frustrated because no one answered the phone. So she called these evangelists and she expressed her frustrations to the evangelist. And she's like, well, nobody's answering. And I'm trying to tell them this and that and that. And uh, my friend told this lady, he says, well, thank God that nobody answered them. Nobody answered the phone when you called. She's like, wait a minute, why? She says, because your heart is full of negative stuff. Mm. Everything that's going on in the world. What have you been feeding yourself? What have you been eating? And what you consume is what you will share with people. So if you're consuming more of what the world is saying, you're going to feed, and, and that's a, a triggering fear in your heart, in your mind, then that is what you're going to transmit to people that you call. So thank God that they didn't answer your call. So listen to what the word of God teaches, because there is a lot of declarations in the Bible, you know, that for example, in the, in the in, for times like this, you don't feel what the word tells you. The Bible says that the faith comes by hearing and by hearing of the word of God. So it is in times like this that we have to engage more. We have to read our Bible more. We have to listen to the word of God more. We have to feed ourselves spiritual nutrients so that we can then uh, um, uh, give positive advice in this, <laughs> everything that's going on. Right. Yeah, it, it's true. It's true. I mean, and literally, this is what's going on in, in the book of James, you know, why it's the occasion of writing these sermons to to the people at Ocasión. Ocasión, yeah. Ocasión de este libro es porque los pensamientos de los hermanos tuvo en la mundo y no en las cosas de Cristo. And and so that's why they were double minded because there was this they they were they were torn and and James states true faith in Christ as I already mentioned is faith of the heart and faith that produces this outward fruit it's outward fruit and and so it's esto fe en nuestro corazón nuestra acción es como es como fruta. Nuestra vida tiene esto, fruta de fe. So cuando mi, you know, es, es muy, um, yo siento muy triste cuando yo hablo con hermanos que, que son, tienes muy miedo de las cosas que está pasando. Tienes esto, miedo en su vida de lo futuro, miedo de los, esos luchas o miedo que esto año largo y feo 2020. En mi, es, es, yo siento triste porque esto no es los acción de fe. Eso no es acción. Claro, nosotros, todos nosotros tenemos miedo de, de las cosas. Hay varias cosas, pero para vivir en esto, en esto, uh, vivir en este lugar de, 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 de miedo, no es la fruto de Cristo. No es la fruto, la fruta de fe. You know, here James is saying it, it, it's this place, this heart, this fruit, that this outward fruit. And it really troubles me to talk to, to several Christians throughout this pandemic where they're consumed with fear and they talk about fear and, and all of that. And it's, it's disturbing. It's not a judgment, but it's just disturbing because that's not the fruit of faith. That's not the fruit of trusting God. I mean, we're all going to have some sort of fear of something, future or something in this, in, you know, or in this time that we're living, not understanding, but that, that's not, that's not, that's not, that's not faith. That's not the fruit of faith that, that we're, we're, you know, we're talking about James and James one twenty two, you know, it says be doers of the word and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. You know, Santiago dice in, in versículo 22, uh, uh, capítulo 1, que, que, que si necesitas estar you know, funcionando en la palabra de, de Dios, no, no solo escuchando, no solo escuchando, dicen yo estoy bien o yo tengo fe, solo escuchando, como 
el hermano Gustavo dice, sí, sí necesita escuchar para tener fe. Pero si escuchamos, si tenemos fe en la palabra, en, en, tenemos estas acciones. Exacción. Entonces, todos los que tienen este miedo en 2020, nosotros no. ¿Por qué? Porque nosotros tenemos fe. Yo no sabe cuándo esta pandemia termina. Yo no sé qué es el nuevo presidente en noviembre. Y nosotros no sabe qué está pasando en otros lugares en el mundo. Pero yo tengo fe que Dios está funcionando en estos tiempos. You see what I'm saying? I'm, I'm saying that, that here, you know, we have this action of faith. So, yeah, we don't know. We don't, you know, while everyone's afraid, we could believe we can trust in God. We don't know when the pandemic's going to end. We don't know who's going to be the next president in November. We don't know what else is going on in the world that's terrible. But the thing is, is that we don't, our action is, is well, I'm still going to trust God. I'm still going to believe God. I'm still going to, I'm still going to move forward, you know? And so here he's talking about this, these, these, in a sense, these works, these, we're going to do this work. And, and that's a real, real Sometimes it's a contradiction. Some people think the Bible contradicts itself because Paul says in Ephesians 2, 8, and 9 that we're not saved by works. We're, we're saved by the work of the cross. And, and that's a confusion for some. It's like, oh, well, the Bible is contradicting itself. And it's not. It's two totally separate things. When Paul talks about it's not our work that we're saved because Jesus has done the work. But what our work is what? the way we live our lives, the action. Um, hay muchos que dicen, oh, well, Pablo dice, nosotros no necesitamos trabajar, ¿verdad? Porque Cristo ha hecho todo el trabajo, pero aquí Santiago dice, si necesita trabajar para estar salvado. Y eso no es verdad. Eso es no la verdad. La verdad, dice Pablo, dice, es verdad. La Cristo ha hecho todo el trabajo para nuestra salvación. Pero, pa, uh, pero Santiago dice, nosotros somos salvados, pero ¿cuál es nuestra acción? What, what, is our, what is our action? A person is known to be a Christian only by their behavior. By their behavior. What's our behavior? Is our behavior faithful? Is our behavior, behavior believing? Is our, is our behavior uh, exhibiting the characteristics of, of, of Christ. Nuestro acción, un cristiano, si puedes saber qué es un cristiano para nuestro, como nosotros vive nuestro, how do you say behavior? Comportamiento. Compar, compa. Comportamiento. Comportamiento. Com, pues, nuestro comportamiento. Tenemos fe, creen, creen que Dios tiene su respuesta. Eso es nuestro comportamiento. Comportamiento. Yeah. Any comments? La, la fe y las obras es, son parte del plan perfecto de Dios y van mano a mano. Ok. La fe, por medio de la fe nosotros somos los salvos, pero son las obras que nos ayudan a mantenernos fieles a Dios. So see, faith and works go hand in hand and are both part of the perfect plan of God. Mm -hmm. Because we're saved by faith. It is through faith that we're saved, but works uh, help us to remain faithful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Someone else? Um, in Galatians 5, I'm just, just bringing it up, just again, talking about behavior or, um, e you know, action. Um, Galatians 5, 22 and 23 is, you know, the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. See, that those are when our life begins to exhibit these actions of believing, trusting God, having faith. Then what's going to happen? The fruit of the spirit, the fruit that's going to show in our lives. This is just part of it to me. I think there's so much more, but this, this is, this is part of it. So, un gran parte es la, la, um, la fruta, fruta, la fruta mm -hmm. 
Is fruta, fruta, is that plural or is that, how do you say singular? Fruto, fruto. Fruto, fruto. La fruto de nuestro vida es nuestras cosas en gal galácticas. Gal 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 Galatas. Man, my Spanish tonight, boy. <laughs> all right, all right, it's great. I love it. Gal Galatians, uh, capítulo 5, versículos 22 y 23, habla de la fruta del espíritu que es paz, amor, gozo, todas esas cosas, uh, uh, fe, todo eso es control de nuestra vida. Eso es las acciones que, que cristianos tienen cuando ellos tienen fe en, en sus corazones. This is, this is the action. The action is true religion. So the thing in our heart, the things that we exhibit in our life, that's part of what the true religion is. It, it, and, and, and James describes it really as, as this service that we are servants, you know? So that's part of the works, right? Not like, oh, I have to work. No, it's a natural byproduct of, of, trusting God, believing God, having this relationship with God, that what? True religion is this, um, uh, is this product of, of um, you know, serving God and, and having faith. So it's the producto de la fe ver, verdadero, is that right? Fe verdadero, or <laughs> religión verdadero, I think it's a stretch. Uh, <laughs> Es, es para servir. Esto es lo producto de tener fe en nuestra vida y también, you know, creyendo en Dios, viviendo la su vida con Dios. Esto es lo producto para servir y la iglesia, servir Dios, servir el mundo. It's this, it's this service. It's part of it. What do you think? Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, love, joy, peace, and all that. What is all of that? It's service to humankind. It's that's that's the sir. It's a that I'm just using that as an example, Gustavo. Pastor, that reminds me of the comment the brother Daniel was saying a little while ago, right? About the person that just said, Oh, I'm just gonna stay here, right, and pray and read my Bible, whatever, right? <laughs> uh so if we want to serve the community, we don't serve the community with just faith. Okay, this involves actions, practical, mm -hmm. just in the, the the book of James is the most practical book in the bible right Pat, yeah. you, and practical. It's, it's it's so i've said this before and just because it fits right now, i'm gonna say it again the world does not need any more uh theoretical christians the it, the world Amen. is full. the world needs practical christians if you want to make an impact in the world if i want to make an impact in the world i must become practical I must put to work all these things a pastor already mentioned, and these are the these are the words that 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 he's that he's connecting, talking about James. ¿verdad? Si quiero cambiar al mundo, si quiero hacer un impacto en este mundo, el mundo no ocupa más cristianos teóricos. El mundo ocupa cristianos prácticos. Esa persona tiene que ser usted. Tengo que ser yo. Con pura fe no vamos a cambiar el mundo. Quedándonos en nuestro cuarto encerrados y orando, y llorando, y leyendo la Biblia, de nada nos sirve para nosotros. No, no le servimos a Dios para nada. <laughs> I, I mean, it, it, uh, uh, Dios nos pidió, nos, nos salvó para que nosotros fuéramos salvos. Me gusta lo que dice el versículo 23, que tal vez puede decirse de esa manera. Uh, verse 23, uh, oh, 24, I'm sorry, Pastor. Uh, mm -hmm. Which says, for he who observes himself and goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of a man he was. <laughs> you know, y como yeah. se nos olvida que alguien, alguien nos habló a nosotros. Don't ever forget that somebody shared the gospel with you. Don't ever forget that you're different because somebody invested in you. Out of the fruit, out of those works that they were, uh, uh, that they were given, they came and they knocked on your door or they decided to pick up the phone and call you and me. And that's why you and I are here. And this is what we are called to do. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 really it's 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 true. It's really a, 
a, a practical thing. I'll get to you right now, Daniel, is that um, just just this week, I I was called in to talk to someone in the, um, um, our hospital has a behavioral health place where people are, um, you know, they are held, uh, uh, it's called 5150. And so someone wanted to see a chaplain. And so I went in, this person was, um, you know, upset with their family, they were locked in there, all this stuff. And, you know, they said, I'm, I'm religious. And, you know, what prayers should I say? What book should I say? You know, what could I read? And this, that, and the other. And I just said, look, are you mad at your, your family? And yeah, I'm mad. I'm, I'm betrayed. You know, they've locked me in here and I can't get out. And I don't know when I'm going to go home and all of these things. And, and so I'm like, well, I know you can't talk to them and you really need to express yourself. I says, why don't you just like complain to God? Why don't, if you're mad, express to God that you're mad. Like, just say, I'm mad, God. And I can't, my parents, my family, uh, all, all of this stuff. Like, and she looked at me and she was like, I never thought of that. That's so practical. I could, I could yell at God. I'm like, well, yeah, he's a big boy. And you could, you know, you could, he wants you to express yourself. He gave us the emotion of anger, express yourself. And she was just like, that's what I needed to hear. That's what I needed. So why am I sharing that? I'm saying, like you said, Gustavo, that to me, that's very practical. Because I could have said, well, hey, you could say 10 Hail Marys. You could say the Our Fathers. You could, you know, read the entire book of Job and, you know, and just, which is all well not so much the hail marys but it you know it hey but my point is it's practicality of serving the lord and as we said james is very very practical daniel the point i was gonna jump in on was um i love how this whole chat we're having right now a lot of it even ties in with verse 12 of James chapter one and that first part of it where it's just blessed is the person who endures testing and the version I have or blessed is the man who perseveres under trial. Basically, blessed is the person who perseveres and who fights on because as we've been saying, our faith is always going to be in a sense put to the test, put through the works and all that. We've seen examples from the beginning of the Bible till when God's going to come and whisk us all away and all the craziness that will happen with that. And it's just a thing that we sometimes forget that there has to be that enduring, there has to be that pressure, that need for persistence, because how then does God like get glorified through our lives and all, or how then does the fruit become bearing? Like, you know, it's one thing to just be like a randomly like nice person here and there, but when people get exposed to the fact that, man, this person went through the A, B, C, X, Y, Z, yet they're still here, they're still you know, joyful, they're still happy, they're still kind, they're all these things. And then you see God more and more in their lives. And it's just a thing that we get to a point where we start letting our faith, as we had said before, be shaken by things to where we just fall into like little comfortable faith nests where like, I only have to do this much and I only have to do that much. And then I'm saved, I'm taken care of, my life is not going to be rocked to and fro. Whereas in a sense, we have to live a little not recklessly, but have to allow ourselves to be shaken up here and there, because then how do we like truly let God minister through us? You know, the word says that he is like a gushing torrent of living waters or a stream of living waters flowing. But if we're just stagnant ourselves and our walks and our belief and our faith, then how is that living water? How is that flowing? Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's, that's good. Mm -hmm. um james 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 127 um this is where uh james pretty much says what um true religion is some says true religion other versions say a pure and undefiled pure and undefiled religion before god and the father is this to visit orphans and widows in their trouble and to keep oneself unspotted from from the world and that, that passage has been, you know, taken uh, and say, oh, well, we need to help the poor and a hundred percent, but with, and also say, and be unspotted from the world. It, it, it doesn't mean like, oh, we're not going to be worldy, which yeah, we, we could say that too, but it's so, it's saying so much more because really what he's saying is it's just this, this, this service 
where others won't serve. In, in, those, in this time, orphans and widows were the bottom of the barrel. Why? Because they had no one to take care of them. No one. And so here he's literally saying, listen, it's, it's serving those that are unservable or don't want to be served. But it's not just the action of that. It's, it's what? It's the expression of faith. It's the expression of, of, of God and not to be spotted by the world. Meaning what? To be consumed by the mentality of the world. Or as Gustavo, you were saying, this negativity that we know is surrounded by what we're, what we're surrounded by. So Santiago dice aquí en capítulo 1, uh, 20, 27, esto, esto regelión, right, de, verdadero, es, es servir, servir ellos que no puedes, no, no tienen nada, no tienen nunca, ellos que están viudas, y también ellos que son orphans. Uh, you're muted. Orfanos. Orfanos. Son órfanos. Pero el mensaje de eso es, sí, sí necesita servir, ayuda a ellos que no tienen dinero, comida, ayuda. Pero está hablando de cosas más. Es la acción de Cristo. Es el amor de Cristo para servir. Eso es la, 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 um, the sign. How do you say sign? La, la señal. señal. La señal. Es señal de nosotros somos no son, no, nosotros no somos, somos cristianos, nosotros somos los hijos de Dios y tenemos este poder. Él dice uh, que, que no estamos marcados de, uh, del el mundo. ¿Por qué? Porque en este tiempo, como nuestro tiempo, este tiempo de Santiago y también el tiempo que nosotros estamos viviendo, nosotros saben que el mundo está malo. Hay muchas cosas, hay, hay muchas cosas buenas, pero hay muchas cosas malas también. That's, that's the, the, the sign is this service that we're not marked by the world. You know, not that we're, you know, clubbing and smoking weed and all that. Yes, it means that, but it, it means more than that. Because why? Because the nature of the world is what? Is selfishness. We know there's great organization, nonprofits, all of that. But what's the mark of a human being that is not in Christ, you know, technically? Uh, we're not selfish. We're not selfish. We're not self-serving. Why? Someone who serves is not self-serving. And it, it, it's here, meaning it means more than we're not going to be easily corrupted, right? If we're serving, if we're doing this true religion by actions of the faith of, of, of our heart, then we're not going to be corrupted by false beliefs or practices that aren't based in the Bible, and we see so many churches, it's not a judgment, so many churches, so many, or, so many cults, so many things, what, that, that things are based on, on stuff that is not biblical. It's not biblical. And that's what, that's the whole crux, right? That's the whole thing of, of false religion or false faith or false things. Why? Be, because it's not biblically based. And that's what James is saying. Y'all are getting y'all are getting carried away on stuff that's not biblically based or not Christ centered that you you you're losing the message or you're becoming this double minded person. You see yourself in the mirror and walk away and don't remember. You know, and, and this is this is what he's saying. So true religion holds on to the truth of the gospel and we rest everything on the word of God. This is a total candy stick of me, man. This is my total soapbox where, where it's just like stuff that is not biblical, that is presented biblical. This is why we have so many, so much human debris that, that used to be in church, used to serve God, hates God because doesn't really hate God, but hates church, ergo hates God. That this is why we have so much human debris. And, and you know, ex-former Christians. Why? Because here stuff is based on things that aren't biblical. That's what James is saying. That's what James is saying about true religion uh, of that. Uh, um, and so it, 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 the focus upon the power of God to change lives and visit people right where they are, that's the service. It's, it's to claim this power. It's to hang our hats on the gospel 
and the word of God. And, and when I say gospel, I mean Jesus Christ. That's what I mean. When I say gospel, I mean Jesus. That, that, that's, that's our focus. That's, you know, that's true religion. Esto es la, la verdad de, de nuestro camino de un Cristo. Es, es sirviendo Dios, sirviendo personas, sirviendo este mundo, pero no tenemos la mentalidad de este mundo que es, how do you say selfish in Spanish? Egoísta. 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 Daniel. What I really love, just uh, thank you for all that, Pastor. The part of the scripture that sticks out to me in all this is a question that was popping in my head as you were talking and as just reading the scripture over as you were talking was the latter half, uh, or just verse 27, where we're supposed to help the orphans and widows in their affliction. And simultaneously, it says, like, keep oneself unstained by the world, which then started formulating a question like, well, how does one meet them in their need and in their situation, yet keep yourself like untethered from that? Because that question comes up because I think that's an issue a lot of us in faith struggle with, where we don't want to like hinder ourselves or taint ourselves and defile ourselves by going out and just being the blessing to people, the service to people that we're called to be. But that's the mistake that we make because if we scroll back and read the first half of the verses you gave us, which was verse 13 and on, that talks about being tempted and all that and basically mm -hmm. the potential of being defiled or stained by this world where God allows us to overcome and he's are not going to put us in a place to be tempted, but rather we get dragged away or tempted when it's our own desires that lead us. So I'm kind of answering my own question right now, but I just wanted to share that. I love that part of it where it's kind of like a thing where uh, I forgot what it was. Um, I was watching a podcast earlier and we we're talking, they were talking about um, the clip culture that we're a part of and like the controversy of that. Whereas we just see a clip of a video and that's the narrative we follow. But if I see, like if I see 40 seconds of a video, I have this idea that this is what's happening. But if I see two minutes of the video, I see a different narrative. And if I see the entire video, it can be completely different than any segment of that video I see. And that's where we get like a lot of our political biases and stuff like that, for example. So with our understanding of this scripture, we think, okay, I'm supposed to help the orphans and all that, but I have to do it from afar because I have to be unstained. You know, I have to keep myself unstained. But no, like we're supposed to be in the mire with people knowing that I am not going to be tempted to sway from this. I'm Again, it falls under the confidence through the faith and the works that God had done. Like Brother Gustavo had said, where it's like a nutrient program for your spiritual man, the, for the spiritual strength. You know, just like we all try to keep ourselves physically healthy and physically strong, spiritually, we've been through a lot that helps us stay strong in these situations where we go to the people in their muck and their mire and we're going to be pull them out of it and be that vessel that God uses to do so. But in turn, we don't become defiled, but rather we become, to use another phrasing the Bible is we become that lampstand to shine his light into the darkness of things, those stars in the sky. Because again, we have that knowledge that I'm not going to be led by my desires into this place. If I'm led by my desires into the afflictions of the orphans and widows, then I'm going to fall susceptible to those afflictions. But I'm being led by God. My faith as the steward of God has led me to do these works. So I don't need to worry about being tempted. And that's the part that everyone needs to remember that we are called to minister and we're not going to be hindered or tainted by the ministry's setting because we're covered. We're, you know, faithful. We're good. Yeah. Yeah. So you say go out in the world to the people that have a need and then uh, not be tainted. Well, it could be as simple as not that we're gonna do what they do or we're gonna be tempted to do what they do, but it could be simply that we, uh, we start thinking of how good we are and oh, look what I did and oh, look what I'm doing. And, and that, right. that's also because that's the mentality of the world. Uh, no es necesariamente uh, de ir a donde ellos están que nos va a causar uh, a ser tentados o a, a, a irnos al mundo. 
simplemente puede ser que vamos a ir a ayudar y a, 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 a llevar uh, comida, la palabra a la gente que lo necesita, pero el peligro es que entonces nosotros vamos a pensar, oh, yo, yo hice esto, yo hago tanto, yo he dado tanto y tiempo y dinero. Y, so ahí, y esa es la mentalidad del mundo. Uh, so ahí estamos mm -hmm. tentados. Uh, porque uh, la religión verdadera es de poner las necesidades de otros antes de las de nosotros. True religion is putting the needs of everybody else before our own. And who's, he doesn't need us, but who should we put first is God. Mm -hmm. él, él no tiene necesidad, pero a quien debemos de poner primero? A Jesucristo. Yeah. So entonces, por eso dice que tenemos que no nomás oír, pero hacer. That's why he says, don't only be hearers of the word, but do it. Because the word is what builds us up. But then there's the danger that we could say, oh, I pray two hours a day. I read four times a, a day. I, I fast uh, every other day. But is it doing you any good? Because you're doing it um, to say that you're doing it. You're not, you're double-minded. You're not mm. doing it to get closer to God. Puedes decir, yo oro cuatro horas al día y, y leo mi Biblia todos los días y ayuno cada otro día. Pero, ¿qué es tu motivo? ¿Por qué lo estás haciendo? Uh, ¿Lo estás haciendo para acercarte a Dios o para poder decir que yo hago todo esto y por eso uh, yo, you know, Dios me va a usar? Por eso dice que tenemos que ser hacedores de la palabra y no nomás oyentes. Porque... Ahí dice que es como un espejo. Cuando te miras en el espejo y miras que hay algo que tienes que atender en tu cara y no te acercas más para tener una mejor vista de lo que tienes que, que atender y luego nomás te vas haciendo lo mismo, uh, entonces ni sirvió para nada. If, if you, that's why it talks about looking in the mirror. If you look in the mirror and you see that there's something you, you have to... Um, Uh, pay attention to on your face, you get closer and you look closely and what is it? And then you say, oh, okay, I saw it. And you walk away and you do nothing. Then it served for no good. But if you look at it and you, 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 you apply a remedy, then it did you good to look at yourself. Pero si te miras y, y tomas el remedio para ayudar, Uh, el problema en tu cara, entonces te sirvió de, de algo. Um, por eso dice también que cuando te, te apartas, te olvidas. Porque cuando la palabra de Dios nos habla, nos sintiéramos, ay, gracias a Dios, es verdad. Uh, Dios, tengo que, que hacer algo. Y luego nomás te vas y sigues en lo mismo. Entonces sirvió para nada. If you hear the word of God or preaching or something and you're like, oh, yes, that's right. I got to change. I got to do something to get closer to God. And then you walk away and don't do anything. Then it did, did you no good. Mm -hmm. So <sighs> religión pura is the no ponernos a nosotros mismos en primer lugar. True religion is not putting ourselves in first place it's got to be god tiene que ser dios right amen it's that it's exactly it's the service it's the service right yeah gustavo oh no no no, no. i was uh, uh, oh you're just de acuerdo uh, con ella. well said you know true religion uh you know if we're serving and we're uh expressing this action of, of god in, in in our lives then true religion stirs people to separate themselves from the practice of the sinful world. So if we're, if we're these practical Christians and we're serving the Lord and we're believing and we're serving God the best that we can with our faith and believing and our, and our actions and, and all of these things, is it, it, it's going to compel people to, to separate themselves. Why? Because we're going to be this manifestation of the goodness of God. 
So nuestras acciones como cristianos, you know, cuando el mundo está mirando nuestra vida de fe y lo poder de Dios, es, es uh, ayuda a ellos para separarlo, separ, separar, 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 separar de, 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 de las maneras de, del mundo. So it's just, it's a, it's a powerful thing. It's a, it's a great topic. We've got, you know, only three more weeks to talk about it. And so, um, you know, we're looking forward uh, to, you know, to that. So um, with that, that pretty much concludes. Esto estamos terminando nuestro estudio. Yo no sé si es um, el um, comentarios, uh, otro comentarios en este momento. I don't know if there's some final comments uh, you men want to make. Uh, before we wrap this up, we have a whole uh, three more weeks to to talk about, you know, uh, talk about um, James chapter one. So someone else? Good. Everyone's good. Great. So then we're going to go ahead and we're going to uh, close with a, a word of prayer. Just uh, some news. I, I hold it very loosely, uh, but um, uh, uh, our elder reached out to us and said that um, San Jose is going, Santa Clara County is going into the orange zone, which means that um, gatherings will uh, be permitted. Uh, you know, of course, with all restrictions of, of COVID restrictions. Um, so uh, um, we'll see what that means, but our goal, uh, Lord willing is in November, the first Sunday in November, we'll be back in our church. But it seems like if everything goes as planned, according to the governor and the and the Santa Clara County, in a few weeks, um, we'll it'll be permissible to gather again inside. Um, Gustavo, could you translate that? Just uh, eh, el, 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 está hablando el pastor de que en, en habló con el. Um, el elder, el anciano, el anciano, de, el anciano del distrito, y están diciendo que ya para el fin de este mes ya van, el condado de Santa Clara ya, le va, ya va a levantar las restricciones y ya se va a poder reunir la iglesia o una vez más en persona. Great, yeah, thank you. So, but we'll continue with our Facebook and because, you know, it still will be your choice to, to come in. Um, si, si puedes entrar, la iglesia tenemos nuestros cultos otra vez como todos, you know, en, los, en su lugar, con las reglas de, de COVID, en los, um, como no, que todos están seguros, pero nosotros, you know, continuamos y en Facebook, que quiere estar en su casa, and so, of course, we're going to continue on Facebook. That's just going to be our normal life now. Uh, we'll, we'll always be online. Uh, thank God for this uh, medium. Um, so even when we do return back to the church, uh, of course, if you feel safe staying home, you'll have, you know, you'll, you'll still be able to enjoy the services. So praise God uh, for that. So I'm going to ask Gustavo to dismiss us with a word of prayer and Lord willing, we'll see you on Sunday on Facebook or there outside the church and uh, Lord willing, Lord Gustavo. Amen, hermanos. Muchas gracias por este tiempo que nos prestan. Espero este servicio les haya sido de bendición. Guárdenlo, aplícanlo. Créanlo, ustedes son hijos de Dios, que Dios les ha llamado a compartir, a cambiar este mundo. Ustedes son agentes de transformación. You guys are all agents of transformation, and God has called you, He has saved you so that you can share His word uh, with this world. Vamos a orar, hermanos. Señor Jesús, te damos las gracias una vez más por tu fidelidad. Gracias por tu palabra que nos reasegura, Señor, y nos deja saber que tú eres Dios, que tú eres grande, que tú eres maravilloso. I ask God that you bless us this week, that you take care of us, that you be with us, God, everywhere we go. Bless us, God. Guide us to all truth and righteousness. Bendice a cada uno de mis hermanos, Señor, esta semana. Dales la victoria, Señor, que tu rostro brille sobre ellos. Dales, llénalos de paz, de tranquilidad, de fe, Señor. Bless us, God. Take care of us. Be with us everywhere we go. I ask God that you meet us in those times, God, uh, in those places where we where we're in, a, in those in, in, in those times where we feel our, at our most vulnerable, Señor. Y, y, y háblanos, habla nuestros corazones. Si hay enfermos, Señor, sánalos. Si hay necesidad, supla la necesidad, te pido. Por amor a tu nombre, te damos la honra, la gloria. En el nombre de Jesús. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
All right. Well, God, God bless all of you. Thank you, all of you that were are watching. Gracias, hermanos, para uh, you know mirando estos estos estudios. Uh, tienes un buen semana en la, la nombre de de Jesús. So, God bless you. God bless Good all of you. Dios lo bendiga. Dios los bendiga. God bless you. <laughs>